بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم این امپارٹنٹ ایشو ریگارڈنگ دی اسلامک اکنامک ڈائریکٹو اسپیسیفکلی دی لاز آف انہیریٹنس از اے نوشن دیٹ اٹ از جنرلی کنسیڈرڈ دیٹ مسلمس اینڈ نان مسلمس کین ناٹ میوچولی انہیریٹ فرام ون اینڈ ادر ناؤ اف وی ایگزامن دس ڈائریکٹو اور دس اسٹیٹیوٹ وچ ہیز بین ڈیرائڈ بائی جورسٹ ان دا لائٹ آف دا قرآن وی فاؤنڈ دیٹ وی فائنڈ دیٹ دس از ناٹ ڈائریکٹلی مینشن ان دا قرآن ہاؤ ایور دیر از ون نیریٹو آف دا پروفٹ وچ کلیئرلی مینشنس اینڈ آئی ایل جسٹ ریڈ آؤٹ دا نیریٹو ٹو یو اٹ سیز قال اللہ یا رسول مسلم الخافر ول الخافر المسلم رپورٹ از ریکارڈیڈ بائی اسامہ ابن زید رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ اینڈ ہی سیز دیٹ اے مسلم ہی ایٹریبیوٹ از رپورٹ ٹو دا پروفٹ اینڈ سیز اے مسلم کین ناٹ بی این ایئر ٹو اے ڈس بلیور نور کین اے ڈس بلیور بی اے مسلمس ایئر سو آن دا بیسز آف دس نیریٹو اٹ از کنسٹروڈ دیٹ مسلمس اینڈ نان مسلمس کین ناٹ میوچولی انہیریٹ اینڈ دیئر فور ٹو ڈے وین ایور دیر آر ماس اسکیل کنورجنس اور وین ایور دیر از دس سچویشن ان وچ اے ممبر آف دا فیملی کنورٹس دا جنرل ان دا جنرل فتوا از اور جنرل ورڈکٹ از دیٹ ہی اور شی کین ناٹ گیو ہز اور ہر انہیریٹنس ٹو ہز اور ہر ایئرز ان کیس دا ایشو از آف اے کنورژن So therefore, this narrative has to be understood and the bottom line, as I have always underscored, is that narratives have to be understood in the light of the Quran. A narrative or a hadith cannot be understood independently. It is based on the Quran and we have to find its spaces in the Quran in order to decipher its, its correct meaning. Now, if we relate this particular narrative to the Quran, we'll find that it relates to the law of Risala, which is specifically and very vehemently mentioned in the Quran. The Quran says that people who deliberately deny the truth in the time of the messengers of God, they are punished by the Almighty in this very world so that this whole exercise of reward and punishment can corroborate the reward and punishment which is going to take place in the hereafter. So therefore, this narrative, when we examine it in the light of this particular law of Risala, we find that the words, of course, are very, very close to this, what the law of Risala states. And we know that people become kafirs when they deliberately deny the truth. And the, for, the term al-kafir, the article al-iflam appended to the word kafir shows that these are specific people, specific people who in the time of the Prophet had denied the truth and vehemently denied the truth. And in spite of being convinced of the truth, they had denied it and thereby had been, become entitled to be called kafir. And it is towards these people that the narrative says, la yarasil muslim al-kafir, wal al-kafir al-muslim. So the word used is al-kafir. And as I said earlier, that this, verse, uh, this word when used with such an al-iflam specifically points to the disbelievers of the times of the Prophet or Prophet Muhammad who had denied the truth and had intentionally denied the truth. They were convinced of the truth and they still denied it and thereby they became entitled to be called Al-Kafir. Now, the narrative therefore specifically relates to the immediate or the direct addresses of the Prophet Muhammad because this law specifically relates to the, to the person of the Prophet. We know that people uh, cannot be called Kafir after his time simply because it cannot be ascertained whether they are deliberately denying the truth, whether they are intentionally denying the truth or not, because this is something which relates to one's intentions. And only the Almighty can know this. And even in the times of his messengers, of, he himself communicated this fact to the messengers. So not even a messenger is in a position to find out whether his addresses are deliberately denying or not. It is the Almighty who communicates this aspect to them. And once the institution of Wahi, or once the institution of the prophethood was closed, this of course, this information of course cannot, uh, can no longer be divulged. So therefore, this narrative does not relate to people or to the immediate ad or to the addresses of this ummah which come after the Prophet or which, are, which do not relate to the first or direct addresses. So in the times of the Prophet also it needs to be understood that uh, the law of inheritance is based on qurb manfa in the words of the Quran. It says akrabu lakum manfa, akrabu lakum nafa which means closeness of benefit. So when the Quraysh or the people of the book had denied the Prophet and Islam deliberately, this, this qurb manfa or this uh, closeness of benefits stood severed and therefore they could not mutually have inherited from each other in those times. And as I said after them, since the word themselves show that this, the, the people discussed are the kafirs, so therefore this nar narrative does not relate and cannot relate uh, to people who are not the immediate and direct addresses of the Prophet. And therefore today if there are uh, conversions taking place in the society and in which a particular person for example converts to Islam or he leaves Islam, in both cases his or her inheritance can reach uh, his or her heirs and the vice versa also can take place. So we, we can safely say that this narrative directly relates and specifically relates to the times of the Prophet Muhammad It has no bearing on Muslims who are not his direct addressees, who are not his immediate addressees. Akulukwa lihaza, mustaghfirullah ali, walakum, walisairil muslimina, walmuslimat.